Hi, Gay DeRusso with Majestic Rider. So today I'd like to talk to you about taking care of your horses in winter. So a lot of people have a problem when it's winter time. Horses become more energetic, they can become more spooky, and sometimes it becomes a horse you don't know. It wasn't the same horse in the summer. So what are some of the reasons that the horses change in the winter? So one is the food. When we go into winter time, a lot of people don't change their food schedule. So they're still giving the horse lots of forage and they're still giving the horse lots of grain. But the problem is now the horse is not being ridden as much. It's not turned out as much. It's not using its mind as much. So all that food that it's eating has now turned into energy and is all bundled up in the horse waiting to come out. So one is the food. I always ask people, what are you feeding them? I would recommend in the winter, because they're not moving as much, they do not need as much food. So I would cut down. If you're giving them any grain, I would cut it out, completely out. Your supplements can also make the horses hotter, and a lot of people don't believe that, but I've seen it happen. Same thing if you're giving them alfalfa hay. So no alfalfa hay, cut all your supplements down or out if possible, and give the bare minimum. Cut their hay down as well. You could spread it around or put it in the hay net so it takes them longer to eat, but they do not need as much food. And give them a grass hay or a teff hay, so less calories, less energy. Also, uh, the horse is not getting worked enough. So now that there's daylight savings time and there's not as many hours in the day, if you go out early, it's dark, and if you go after work, it's dark. So a lot of people just are not getting their horses out. The hard thing is, even though it's dark, you need to just make yourself go. Uh, even though it's cold and it's rainy, it's windy and it's snowing, you still need to go out and get your horse out. So you can hand walk them. Um, I tell people this is a good time to do all your groundwork. Practice getting respect, keeping them out of your space, do a lot of backing up, do a lot of uh, the sending exercise, um, teach them to side pass on the ground, teach them to do tricks, um, anything you can think of. You could do trailer loading, you could teach them to sidle up to the mounting block. You're trying to give them new things to challenge their mind and to make them think because they're not getting rid of that energy and they're not getting you know, challenges mentally when they're just standing in their stall all day. So work them. I always try if the horse hasn't been um, out, you know, to turn them out, run them around. So I know you might have snow and ice, um, maybe you can't turn them out, but if you can, I would definitely do that. I would also run them, you know, around in the arena and just get that extra energy out in the bucks and you know clap your hands make some noise if they're not moving chase them around some and so you get all that extra energy out and keep them moving until they're breathing pretty hard then they'll want to slow down because they want to catch their air just like we do if we run up a hill we want to slow down and catch our air so keep them running around a fair amount get rid of that extra energy first and then work on lunging them or doing the groundwork and then using things to do their mind. So when I lunge them, if it's cold or they're energetic and I'm trying to get rid of energy, I don't just go around for 10 minutes one direction and 10 minutes the other way. That uses some of their energy up, but it doesn't use their mind, it doesn't make them think. The quicker thing to get rid of the energy and then so you lunge them less time is to make a circle or two and then turn that horse around, send them off the other direction. A circle or two, send them off send the other direction. If they're being really bad, send them one way, turn them, send them the other way, turn them, and keep going back and forth a fair amount and get that horse paying attention, using its mind, but also he's rocking back on his back end, so that's gonna make more energy as well. So we got the turnout, the lunging. I do lots of desensitizing in the winter, and it's warm here, so it's different when it's you know somewhere freezing. They're much more energetic. So do a lot of desensitizing, but not just with your rope or the flag, grab a balloon, they don't like the pitchfork, use the pitchfork, they don't like the bucket, they don't like something in your grooming box, they don't like the grocery bags, they don't like the, um, you know, the four-wheeler, 
just anything that horse is spooking on, now's the time to go work on it. So say you come up with a four-wheeler and the horse, you know, rears up and spooks around. Have that four-wheeler drive away. You run after it with the horse. Chase it down for a little bit. Then go up and see if that horse will sniff it. If he won't, give him something energetic to do, like, you know, the sending exercise. Then bring him back up to the four-wheeler again and see if he wants to touch it. Remember, you're trying to make the right thing easy and the wrong thing hard. So... If he doesn't want to go up to and investigate it, then you make him go to work. He'll figure out going up and investigating that is much easier than going to work. So you're getting two things done. When you go to ride, a lot of people are more nervous in the winter. So you need to warm up the horse a fair amount. Do it where you can do it safely, either in a round pen or an arena. And then once you've calmed yourself down and that horse has the energy already worked out of it, then you can go out and ride. Now say they're spooking, you're like, every time I take him out, he's freaking out. Well, we all need exercise. So get off, walk that horse out there, go as far as you can walk, and then get on and ride back home. Because they're usually never spooky going home. Kind of weird, huh? Because they want to get home, so they'll go buy anything. So you could do that, but then when you get home, you know, lunge them some more, or ride them in the arena, or tie them up, tighten that saddle up, put them somewhere they're not by the other horses. Don't feed them. You know, you can feed them when they're out. You can give them little cookies and stuff, but don't feed them anything when you get back home, except when it's feeding time and they get their normal pay. Because again, you're trying to make going away from the barn good, coming back to it bad. But again, a lot of the problem, the main problems is the horse is still getting fed a lot. He's not getting worked enough. He's not getting turned out enough. We're riding in the arena more than we're doing trail work and those trail hills really wear our horses out we just forget about that and we don't have the heat to wear them out so it's totally reversed so these horses will get spunky and a little nutty and so there's days you're just like i'm not gonna ride or maybe there's months you're like i'm not gonna ride he's a nut that's okay you just work them on the ground and get the other things better and then a lot of people forget there's trainers like me that we need work and we need money to support ourselves so if you're having issues, call trainers by you. See if you can either bring your horse to them for a couple of weeks or so, or they will come to you and have them help give you a program that um, is going to work for you. You know, you tell them when you get out of work and how much time you have and, you know, then give me something. I only have a half hour with this horse. What can I do for a half hour? Well, you could back around the barn for a half hour. That would wear them out. They don't like to back up. It'll get your back up better. It'll get your respect better. Gives that horse, he really has to think when he's going backwards. And again, it's around the barn, so it makes him not like the barn. So there's many things to do, but you have to use your mind. And then I always tell people, you hear this in every video, make a diary. So you'll know what you did before you had a good ride, and you'll know what you did before you had a bad ride. You'll see how many days off that horse had, because we forget. Um, but remember, while we're going to work and we're still doing lots of things, these horses are just standing around and not doing anything. And if they're cold, they usually huddle together. It's not like they run around their stall trying to make themselves warm. And the other thing is, if you're blanketing them, they're not using that extra energy to make themselves warm because that's what they do in the wild. They huddle together, but they use, also use that energy to heat their body. So if you're heating their body for them, you are doing all these things to just make the horse have more energy. And that becomes a major problem. So I'll try to show you some things to do, and hopefully that'll help. But again, analyze the situation. So many things are different in the winter than we're in the summer. And also the social, the horse isn't getting turned out with his friends enough. It's not seeing all the people around the barn. You're not going on the trail. Everything is changed, so it takes a while for them to get that energy, to get rid of it, um, but also to get their mind back. But that's what you're there for. You're there to help them to do that, and there's so many things to work on. But as just like the horses, they're lazy, and we're also lazy. So it's cold, it's windy. We don't want to go out there and work them. But you'll see in all my videos, it's cold, windy here. I don't care if it's raining, snowing, whatever it is. I am here to get those horses out, to work them, and make them better horses. And if you just keep doing it, then they don't care about the rest of the stuff. But if you don't get them out and they have a whole bunch of time off, well, guess what? They get full of energy and they get kooky, and you kind of have to restart them again. So if you don't ride all winter, you don't do anything with them, 
and then it comes March or April and you want to ride that horse, they are a ball of nerves, they're full of energy, and they're usually pretty nuts. So it will take them a while for you to get them calmly back out on the trail. And so you have to think about that. So if I took a horse that hasn't been ridden for months, am I going to go out on trail that first week? No. I'm probably going to work him at home a couple of weeks, get him real tired, get him real respectful, make sure he's going well in the arena before I go out there on trail. So in the winter time, if he hasn't been out for two days because it's been cold and rainy, am I going to take him out on the trail even though I might lunge him first? No, I'm not going to because it was cold and rainy, so I need to work that energy out. And you got to get in a routine so the horse just understands what it is. But again, when they do something wrong, you have to have a plan how to fix it because otherwise that horse has no idea he did anything wrong. He's just being a normal horse, jumping around, doing his goofy stuff that normally would not get him in trouble. But now because it's winter, it's cold, you're nervous, everybody's scared, everybody's jumpy, it just goes downhill. Okay, so Cash has had two days off. It's not cold here. It's probably, it's been up in the 50s or 60s, but still, you'll see they can be energetic. So I'm whipping the whip, he's just eating food. Cash. So see this, two days out and it's warm here, okay? So if it's cold there, they're gonna be leaping, bucking, doing all sorts of stuff. Chase him some more. Okay, so if you have somewhere big for them to run, that's great. If you don't, you're going to have to do more lunging. And the lunging helps, but of course they can't run and buck like they can get the energy out here. So again, if you have the option to do both, I would do both. Or put another horse in with them and let them run around together. So see, he's running more now. Now that I actually woke him up. Like, get that energy out. Also, people forget in the winter, you know, your horses prey. So the predators are still out there in the winter. They're starving. The horses are starving when they're out in the wild. And so they're on high alert because the predators are going to be more likely to try to eat them because they're not getting enough food, right? So you might be like, well, he's so spooky in the winter and he's jumping and it's goofy because his instincts are telling him, hey, you're out here alone or you're only with one buddy and uh, you guys are going to get eaten today. Right? Haven't you ever had the feeling something bad's going to happen? Well, that's what they have. So you really got to work that energy out, bring them down, and then be their dominant calm leader so they believe you and will go where you want to go. First, you want to make sure your horse is actually being respectful and listening to you when you start the groundwork. So let me get somewhere. So you should teach them to get out of your space just by wiggling your rope. Now it's winter, it's cold, so we want to see is this guy paying attention? Um, I want the ropes I use are from Half Circle Ranch, uh, the four knotted halter, long heavy rope. This is about 12 feet. So what I'm going to do is see if he's paying attention. Is just wiggle this rope. Now he's trained that if I just wiggle that rope, he should back up, right? And nothing happens. So that means no, he's not paying any attention to me. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to wiggle. Now I'm going to do it harder and I'm going to do it harder. So what it's telling them is, hey, dude, you better pay attention to me because I'm more interesting than the things that are around you. And again, to have him not focus on other things and not be spooky, he needs to be focused on me. So now I'm going to pull him back in towards me, but this horse does like to look around and pay attention to other things. So now we're going to try this again. Hey, we're going to wiggle a little. The boy. Now he's thinking about it, but he's not very good. So I'm going to do it a little bit harder. The horses are up in the corner there and he wants to pay attention to them and not to me. So I'm going to do this again. And again, you don't need very much room for this. You could do this in their stall. You could do it in the hallway. So I'm going to wiggle lightly. Now I want him to back up faster. And then I'm going to go back to light. Because he needs to know that I'm going to start light, but if you don't actually pay attention to me, I'm going to do it harder. Even though he's backing up, he's not doing it well enough. So. And this is not hurting him at all, and we're exercising his brain, which is a good thing. So I'm going to wiggle lightly. Nothing's happening, so I'm going to do it hard. Then I go back to light, and I'm back to hard because he's not going enough. Okay, so now I've done it four, four or five times. He's still not paying attention enough, right? So if I want to have a good ride, he needs to be paying attention to me. So I'm going to wiggle light. There he goes. 
Now if he didn't go, again, you can wiggle the rope harder or you can take your excess rope and wave it towards their chest or their knees. These ropes come with a spanker, so if your horse is not paying attention, you want to use a spanker to help you to get them out of your space. If you're using a nylon halter or leather halter, it doesn't have as much pressure as these, so it will not work as well, and you'll have to put a lot more pressure on your horse with the rope to get them to respond. So that's why I like these halters. They also come with metal hardware here. So when I wiggle this, it hits them in the chin. If I'm just wiggling a rope, it's not gonna hit them as much. Now see, he's just trying to come into my space, so I'm gonna tell him no. Not unless I ask you, okay? All right, so we're gonna come forward. We're gonna try it again. I'm gonna wave the rope at his chest and his knees just so you see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna wiggle lightly. He's not going. And then I can wave this charge him. See how much quicker he got at that? So if you just go to the barn, you got nothing to do today, and you do this for 20 minutes, well, you're gonna get better. So you're gonna get the horse better at being respectful out of your bubble and also him backing up better. Okay, so now I'm gonna come forward again, and then I'm gonna try it one more time. So now he's much better. And the walking horses like to back up crooked, so I'm gonna back him up straight. Okay, so that's one exercise. You could go walk around and do it. You could do it up and down hills, which build up muscles around their stifles. You could do it in the barn aisle. You could do it in the stall. So now I'm gonna show you um, lunging exercise. So. Same thing, if your horse is respectful and paying attention to you, when you tell them to go out, they will. If they're not, they're not gonna do anything. So I'm gonna point and I'm gonna wave. And you don't let them come into your space at all. If they come to circle in and come into your space, then you you know, push with the stick or whack them with the stick to get out of there. So this is just one circle around. So if I wanna get energy out, I'm gonna make them go faster. And then what I'm gonna do is turn them. Here we go. Whoa, whoa. Now I'm going to turn them and go off the other way. Kind of quickly. Right, Tanner? Now I'm going to turn them again. Whoa, whoa. Go the other way. Move your feet. So again, you see, I'm just going around once and then I'm making him turn. See him licking his lips, putting his head down. He's already like, this is not fun. What is wrong with her today? So you want to get him respectful, but I also still want to get his energy out. If I point and clucked and that horse didn't do anything, I know he's not with me today. He's not paying attention. Remember, this is their job to work for us. It's not a long period of time. It's just a couple of hours. He needs to pay attention when he's at work, just like we have to pay attention. So. If he's not paying attention, I'm gonna do something for, you know, to fix it because I can't take away his paycheck. I'm not gonna get rid of him just because he's not paying attention. It's my um, job to make him actually pay attention work for me. So now I'm gonna show you another exercise. And these are on all the natural horsemanship things. I'm just giving you things to do, but to learn it in detail, you can tell me if you need me to do that, but otherwise you can get it off of the, you know, other trainers as well. So the sending exercise, so I'm going to send him, I'm going to pull on the rope, wave this towards his butt, which he already knows how to turn, turn and send him back and forth. And the object is he's supposed to stay out of my space. A lot of times I'll do it in between the fence to make him more claustrophobic, um, but I got to do it here so you can see me. So I'm going to send him out. Now I'm going to turn him, so I'm going to pull on his head. He hasn't done this in a long time and wave this towards his butt. Now I'm going to go the other way. Now I'm going to pull on his head, wave this towards his butt. Yeah, then I'm going to keep going. Send him back and forth. Whoa. So this will make your woe better too. Whoa. Pull on his head, wave this at his butt. Go out the other way. If they come into your space, you push him out with the stick. Whoa. So now I'm going to move a little bit further in case you can't see me. Whoa. And block him with that stick. Again, this is going to wear them out. But 
you'll see I'm really using this halter well, to get him to pay attention. So if I had a nylon halter and a little lunge rope, this is going to be much harder for me and wouldn't work. Well, so you're trying to move their feet. Well, get them to use their energy. Don't let them in your space. There he got my space. Well, walking horse can cross his feet over like that. So can your little gated horse. That's probably more agile and better balanced than him. Well, okay. Now I'm going to let him stand here for a minute and catch his air. So he's already out of air. So if you've been working your horse and you're like, he doesn't look like your horse does after you do it. Well, one, you're not doing it long enough. Two, you're not doing it right. So you need to figure that out and learn how to do it better. But this sending exercise is also another good exercise to do in the winter. If you're going to work them and they're outside in the snow or the ice, you need to put Borean or something on their shoes so it grabs and they do not slip and fall on the ice. So you want to talk to your shoer about that, make sure it's safe first for you to do it. Okay, so now I'm going to show you another exercise. And all I'm going to do is back this horse up. But I'm going to back him around the arena. So, and I'm going to go with him. So I could, um, you know, back up down the aisle way, back them into a stall, because they always want to go to their stall, right? And that'll help you practice, like, getting them out of the trailer, because it simulates the same thing. they got to pick their feet up. So let's see if we got his back up pretty good or not. So I'm going to wiggle. He's not going, so I'm going to do it harder. Now I'm going to turn him. I don't know if you can see me or not. And I'm going to turn him again so we can buy the camera. So backing up in circles, squares, patterns, good boy, I'm going to give him a break for a second, but backing up in circles, squares, patterns, um, over poles, that's really hard for the walking horses to go backwards over poles, um, so make sure they're small, um, is very hard for them, and it makes it more difficult. So see now his head's down, he's tired, more tired than he was when he was just running out there, but first I let him get some excess energy out so I wouldn't have to do this a long time. So now I'm going to back him up some more. So wiggle, I'm waving my stick. Now I'm going to turn his hind quarter. He's in my space a little bit, so I got more aggressive with that. Okay, so now I'm going to turn his hind quarter. So again, we already taught him all this, so he knows how to move his hind quarter. Good boy. Now I'm going to back him up this way. Now if he doesn't go, I might say, hey, you want to make sure he might be confused, but he might also be goofing around with you. So hitting him with the stick will help him know two things, which direction to go, and if he's goofing around, it'll get after him. So again, that little piece of metal makes a big difference because it's hitting him there. So now I'm going to give him a break again. See his head go down. He's breathing hard. He's like, she is crazy today. I don't know what she did with those other horses this weekend, but she is a nut job. That's great, because I know he respects me if he thinks I'm nuts. <laughs> so remember, we're trying to be like the stallion. We're trying to lead him places. He's scared. He has to trust me. Well, how is he going to trust me? Same way the horses trust the stallion. If they don't do what he wants, the stallion chases them. The stallion moves their feet around. If they're doing something bad, that stallion will attack them. It will push them away from the herd. And what that stallion says is, you can't behave with us and you can't get along in the herd then you can't be in the herd and you can go survive on your own and probably die and feed that mountain lion while the rest of us survive and what's that horse do the horse comes back to and says I'm, I'm sorry I want to I want to go with you guys I don't want to die what do I got to do so watch some wild horse videos you'll see when they're pushing the other horses out so you got to make this horse want to be with you but you have to show them you're in control and the natural horsemanship part is not me beating him up, just showing him, hey, I can move your feet. I have control of you. If you trust me, I'll take care of you. If you don't trust me, then I'm just going to do things and take you away from your friends. So it's similar in a way, as best as we can make it. Okay, so now he's tired again. So we did the sending exercise. We did some lunging. We did backing up. What else can I do? Well, I'm going to practice moving his hindquarters. Because that's a great thing to do to get your horse to turn towards you. 
uh, especially in the stall and stuff. And he can do this at this standstill. It's also called to turn on the forehand or disengage in the hindquarters if you do it under saddle. So, trying to make sure. So I'm going to move his hindquarters. Make sure he's crossing his legs over pretty well. And then if he gets up in my space, which he is, I'm just going to use my elbow to push him out of it. Good boy. So now I'm going to try it again, but it takes energies to sit there and cross their legs over. Again, you could do this in their stall. So I'm going to wave towards the top of his butt. Again. Good. And again. So the point is they should pivot on their front feet. Some of the gated horses wobble back and forth. They're not like the quarter horses. So it's a little bit harder on them um, and their front feet drift, but you're going to help control that. So then when you're doing it under saddle, you'll see, well, he could do it on the ground. He could definitely do it under saddle. So I need to help him. So now I'm going to do the other side. So I'm waving towards his butt. I'm going to stop and rub him so he's not afraid of the stick. So everything I move him with, I still rub him with it. So I don't want him afraid of it. It's just when I change my behavior, then I want him to move. So you'll see I'm bending over and I'm changing my body posture. That means, hey, buddy, you better pay attention and you better move. Good. Now he likes to get in my space, don't you? Because he's so cute and everybody lets him do it, but I'm not going to let him do it. So now I'm going to make a full circle. Oh boy. So again, they can do it faster. You can do it slower. So you can just play around. Don't let them in your space. You can just play around with making them do it faster, slower, two steps, five steps, anything to get them thinking, okay? Then you can pet them, of course, and you can go into their space or you can pull them into your space if you want to pet them and reward them, but don't let them just come into your space. Okay. So now we could also move his shoulders. I don't know if Cash has done this, so this might not go very well at all, but we'll see. So we're going to try and move his shoulders. Good boy. Good job. I guess I did teach it to you a long time ago. Good job. So moving their shoulders around on the hindquarters, that's much harder to do. Okay, so let's try it again, because maybe you couldn't see me. Good boy. So you're alternating between the stick and then pulling on the halter so they don't walk away. Good job. Okay, now we're going to go the other way. So stick towards his head. If he doesn't go, we're going to bop him with it. Again, we're not hurting them. We're just pushing them around. And this is going to use his muscles and make him a better and more respectful horse. You can do other things like stretches, you know, with the carrot, bringing their head back and forth, doing abdominal exercises. Um, so maybe we'll try those in a minute. So now we're still going to move his body around. Boy. Good. So pretty good for a walking horse because it's much harder for them, right? So now he wants to come in my space and I'm like, no, you can rest, but it's over there. Okay. So again, you see me do the desensitizing on videos, but I'll attach it here to stuff I desensitize with. But you want to desensitize to anything. He spooks at a log, you want to go up to the log. He doesn't want to go up to the log, make him work somewhere else, bring him back up to the log. Remember, you're making the thing you want better. So if you associate the log with rest and going away from the log with work, once they get tired enough, they're going to want to go over to that log. So you just have to do it right. Or you can take him somewhere, say you can't lunge him. Well, just sit over there, yank on the rope, annoy him, do turn on the haunches and forehand. See, he walked into my space. you got to catch that. Um, and they can just do annoying things and then bring him over to the log and make a rest. Same kind of concept. So you're trying to work the energy out, but if you can't, you want to at least work their brain. Okay. Yes, really is tired. He doesn't want to do this anymore. But he's really tired and he's really paying attention. <laughs> attention now. So let him have a break while I'm thinking. See, he's thinking about coming to me. So see that one step? You got to catch that because if you don't catch that, then they come. So I'm like, no. Now it's nice that he wants to come over and spend rest with us, right? But first he just has to practice being respectful. So. If you can't walk your horse around and keep him out of your space, of course he's going to be a jerk when you ride him or when you lunge him or when you try and do these exercises. So again, that respect, that bubble, 
is super important that you keep them out of it. So let's just practice walking around and walking fast and walking slow. So come on kids. So I'm going to come with me. He's going to come with me. And as we walk, I'm going to practice walking really slow. So the horse should imitate what I'm doing. Right? Now if he's walking too fast or he's into my space, what am I going to do? I'm going to back him up and I'm going to try it again. So I want to keep him about three feet behind me. So now I'm going to walk really slow. So he might have to keep stopping. And if he does, that's perfectly fine. But he has to do what I'm asking him to do. So if it's walk really slow and he's a big horse, he might have to stop to keep doing it. So now I'm going to stop. See how close he is to me? That's not good. So if your horse is not paying attention, apparently he just wasn't, then he's going to walk too close before he stops. So let's test him again. So we're walking. Sometimes I wait till the horse is spacing out because that's, that's what I want to teach him. So now I'm going to stop. I can touch him, can't I? So he's too close. Now I can't touch him, so he's far enough away. The boy. Now anytime he lowers his head, he lowers his head, he touches the ground, he licks his lips, those are all submissive things. So if your horse tries to lower your head when he's standing doing this, don't yank his head back up because he's actually trying to tell you, like, oh, Thank you, you know, uh, I'm respecting you, that's it. So now I'm gonna stop. So he's still a little close, not as bad as before, but better, okay? But it's really hard, this is a huge horse for him to walk slow. So now I'm gonna try and walk faster. So he should go slow if I go slow, he should go fast if I go fast, right? So now I'm going fast, and now I'm gonna go slow again. Now I'm going to go fast, now I'm going to go slow again. Now I'm going to go fast, now I'm going to go slow. Now I'm going to stop, he's right on me, so I'm just going to wave this around me, get out of my bubble, dude, okay? So you got to keep practicing it because people, again, this is not my horse, so people will let them into their space and you gotta keep fixing it over and over again, or people come up to your horse's stall and you know feed the horse. So you have to keep teaching that respect because people are trying to take that off of it, off of the horse every day. That's why I put signs up, do not feed my horses. So now it looks like we have a calm, respectful horse, and now would be a good time to ride this horse, and I would expect him to be somewhat well, well behaved. Again, with it freezing, or it's 20 degrees, or it's zero degrees, at your house, this could take a lot longer, couldn't it? You might have to do it a lot harder to really get his attention because it's cold, it's windy, and maybe you fed that horse a little bit too much energy. So you have to work more off. I don't. It's warm. He eats hay. He gets a little bit of grain, not a lot, so I don't have to work it as much. And then it depends on your horse's temperament. Is he goey or he's slow? If he's goey, it's going to take more to work that off. If he's slow and lazy, it's not going to take as much to get that energy off. And this is the hard part, because when you buy the horse, people are like, I want a goey horse. I don't want a push to go, right? Well, what happens in the winter? They get crazy, because they're a goey horse, and you keep feeding it, so it gets lots of energy. Now, the lazy horse also gets energy in the winter, because you fed that one too much, and he's energetic. So he might then become the horse you wish he was in the summer, right? Because now he's more energetic, but in the summer, he's a duck. So, again, as you're looking at a horse, you have to know that. Is he goey? Well, it gets really cold here. He's going to be a more goey horse. He's really lazy, and geez, I hate riding this thing. But in the winter, he's not going to try to kill me as quickly as the other one is. So you have to remember that in your mind. They're living animals, and what we do to them is very unnatural for them. So we have to try to fix those things to make them back into a rideable, respectful horse, okay? So remember those feed things that you're feeding too much, you're not working them enough, there's not enough daylight, there's not enough entertainment for the horse, they don't have things to watch, they're stuck in the stall or everything's cold and there's no birds flying around for them to watch. So you gotta get, get rid of some of that food, get rid of the energy, work their mind, give them things to look at, give them things to think about. Again, you can teach them tricks, you can do lots of different things with them, you just have to think, what can I do? What space do I have available? and then try to make it work, but don't give up, okay? If he was good in the summer, 
he can be good in the winter. It's just you have to figure it out. And if this is your first year with that horse and he came somewhere warm, it takes a while for them to acclimate and figure it out. And that's why your older horse who's been there 20 years doesn't care anymore about the winter because he's been living it every year. But this new horse just got there. And you might have forgot that your 20 year old horse when he was eight was a nut job. You just forgot about it because it was 12 years ago. So it takes time and it's gonna take your new horse time to acclimate and get used to things. But remember, it just means you can do more with them. You can learn more because now they have the energy. They're not gonna sweat. So now's the time that you can you know, take hours and work with them and try to teach them new things. Make sure they're respectful out of your space, okay? So I'm gonna leave him here. Say, you can treat him like a dog. Say, uh-uh. Pretty cool, right?